Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Pharma Tutor Live. Hope you all can hear and see me. Just write in a comment box so I can see that okay you can hear and see me. Hello. Am I audible? Okay, great, great. So, welcome all of you again. Uh, I'm guessing that all of you are staying safe. Okay. Well, uh, this is our first webinar uh, by Pharma Tutor, and believe me, there are more to come in future. Uh, through such webinars, our primary goal is to make you aware about your future career prospectus in various fields of pharmaceutical uh, industries. At Pharma Tutor, we are serving pharmacy fraternity uh, since last 12 years, and we are guessing uh, we are guiding pharma students and novice pharmacists to have the best career option. But today, uh, through this webinar, uh, we are trying to connect bridges uh, for you for your career path in pharmacovigilance with a special guest from industry who will come with us soon. Uh, before introducing our guest, uh, let me brush up your knowledge about pharmacovigilance. Pharmacovigilance is also known as drug safety. It is a pharmacological science relating to, to the collection, detection, assessment, monitoring, and prevention of adverse effects uh, relating to the pharma, uh, pharmaceutical products. Now, we all uh, uh, know that uh, because uh, uh, every clinical trial has four, four phases. You, you may are aware about that. Okay, So phase one, phase two, and phase three clinical trials are, are needed before a drug uh, drug company can apply for authorization to the marketing for the drug candidate. Now, before these phases of clinical trials, data related to the serious adverse effect collected and assessed by investigators in hospitals or clinical trial facilities. Uh, then that particular data is sent to pharmaceutical company, which is responsible for R&D of that particular candidate. Then that data is assessed by their in-house uh, PV team, pharmacovigilance team, and then they analyze it based, of, based upon its safety profile, whether the drug, can, uh, drug candidate could go in next phase of clinical trial or not. Then that same data is sent to regulators, whose decision is final, whether the drug safety and efficacy profile is acceptable or not. And this is how the drug comes in the market. And regulators means uh, just like a Cdisco in India, okay? and just like FDA in USA, okay? Uh, so before introducing our guest, I just want to tell you one more thing that you can share this link right now with uh, your friends, your colleagues, so they can also attend this live webinar, okay? And uh, here we have a guest and a very knowledgeable person, very experienced person in the field, uh, Mr. VSM Raju who is also a friend of mine and who has completed his MPharm in pharmacy practice from JSS College of Pharmacy, Mysore. Later, he has also completed his PG diploma in pharmacovigilance from there itself. And he has very vast experience in the field of pharmacovigilance uh, in the companies like Quintiles, IMED Global, Hospitals and Navitas Life Sciences, where he is also a team member of 40 people in pharmacovigilance. So uh, we have such a person with us right now. And also the main aim uh, for this event is that that whatever bookish knowledge we are getting uh, during our uh, course of education, this kind of knowledge is not written over anywhere. This comes with the experience of this kind of people. So here I am uh, sharing a screen with Mr. Raju. Thank you, Rajesh. Thanks for your words. Uh, I hope uh, all are safe and hi all. A very good uh, morning to you, all of you. Uh, hope all of you can hear me and hope all are safe at homes. 
and um, before going into the career aspects of the pv i just uh, want to formally thank rajesh my friend and i know like where the journey started the pharma tutors pharma tutors i need to tell the story of the pharma tutor when the pharma tutor started uh, when in the in the year of 2008 a unique idea of a student of a b farm student has created pharma tutor and now the reach is 200 countries and uh, millions of people so i'm so happy that one of my friend one of my closest friends uh, website was have reached almost 200 countries and millions of people and that small idea has changed uh, lots of people career as well it's it have impacted a lot of uh, people career that's where i'm so happy and that's how we need to think unique so always the unique thinking will show you know different kind of results that's the example of farmer tutor i'm so happy uh, for my friend dear friend uh, vag rajesh okay uh, i hope every one are able to hear me right okay uh, before going into the pv like um, uh, vastly called as uh, farm co vigilance and shortly we will call it as pv and it's also known as drug safety as uh, rajesh said and rajesh also gave a very good introduction about the pv so uh, it's been asked me to talk about the career aspects in uh, farm co vigilance so first of all i think uh, the most of the audience are from pharmacy background and uh, as well as uh, from some of the life cycle uh, background like uh, msc uh, candidates as well so uh, as most of the people are from a pharmacy background i just want to let you all guys know that uh, for mainly for pharmco vigilance what kind of an uh, skill sets is required so the skill sets of pharmaco vigilance is you should be having very good knowledge of the pharmacology and as well as therapeutics okay as well as therapeutic knowledge i think uh, therapeutics is the vast terminology which has been used in the farm d courses or pharmacy practices and uh, even uh, in uh, b farm courses as well i think farm pharmacy therapeutics is uh, vastly used so for therapeutics and pharmacology is very much important why because we deal with drugs safety so how we will know about drug safety so we should know what is a drug first of all and on which system it acts and what 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 are his, that indications of the drug so and for what indication it is acting and how it is acting so if for example if a drug has been given for an headache so does it acting only on the headache or uh, only on the cna system or it is also giving any adverse uh, reactions to any other systems so that's what it deals in the drug safety so the knowledge what needs to be there uh, for pharmaco vigilance what we look into is uh, pharmaco uh, pharmacology and therapeutics of course the life cycle background as well know about the anatomy of um, the human and uh, everybody knows about the ecology and the therapeutics so even life sciences backgrounds are eligible for uh, pv but however pharmaco vigilance in pharmaco vigilance uh, most of the companies want uh, the background of hcp hcp is nothing but healthcare professions so which like uh, pharmacies nurse nursing pharmacy dent uh, bds or uh, dental uh, surgery mbbs uh, mds are um, eligible for this and a uh, few of the clients even few of the pharmacy companies even uh, accepts the life sci life sciences background as they also have uh, you know the knowledge on um, partial like you know uh, partial knowledge of uh, drugs and uh, drug safety and the training anyways will be provided at um, the companies like uh, once you uh, been into the company once you are uh, once you are into the drug safety anyways the company will provide you the training so mostly now because uh, the topics for me is to cover like career aspects what uh, what exactly the career growth you will have in the pv so uh, i will focus on that so uh, in pv in pv like you know the 
mainly the farm the, the students what they need to concentrate when you are coming for an interview for especially when pv you need to know what exactly uh the pv professionals the farm covisance professional will do as rajesh said like uh, assessment monitoring detection this all a part of uh, farm covisance but basically uh, farm covisance can be divided into like you know few things like the what exactly what work we do like uh, we can divide it into uh, micc it's also called as medical information call center and icsr individual uh, safety case reporting and uh, aggregate reporting uh, as well as uh, signal detection these are the main aspects of uh, pv so uh, i will just let you know what all skill sets is required for each of uh, these pv like you know what we divide into these four uh, mainly into these four so micc it's like uh, medical information call center most of uh, most of us think like you know call center jobs or uh, you know by being in uh, life sciences or uh, hcp professions we think that like you know call center job is something like it's not for us it, it this is not for us but micc is something different guys micc is medical information call center where the knowledge should be there like you know uh, the 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 knowledgeable professions like uh, life sciences backgrounds or hcp background they will only have the knowledge on medical information what kind of a medicines they like you know if uh, example if a consumer have taken some products okay so they will ask about that products to the manufacturing authorities like you know manufacturing authority holders like mah we call it as like in a layman uh, no layman uh, language we can tell the companies like who the the product belongs to they will call and they will ask about the drug i think um, most of you all know because all are um, all are uh, educated over here all are pharmacy most of them are pharmacy background you all know that all the pharmaceutical uh, products will have an information about the company and they will write they will give um the information on if you can see in the tablets or uh, whatever their um, uh, injections or tablets whatever in that uh, medicines they will mention the their website or uh, their toll free number or uh, or uh, their email id so so that people reach them about the safety and what what are like you know people may reach for anything but the main aspects of that is uh, to to you know to give any uh, such uh, kind of an information on the safety aspect so mscc guys are the one who will take this information and who will also look and uh, forward the information if it's a safety related information they will forward to the uh there's a team called icsr as i mentioned so they will forward this to the icsr team or uh, to the uh, proper uh, teams of the mah so that the next assessment will be done on the safety aspects and the same time few few of the medics or uh, few of the medical uh, like you know other hcps or hcps or uh, consumer want some kind of an information on the particular products that will be given by the micc guys so this is also one of the profession where i am seeing the the next future there is a very good future in micc so guys the main the, the main aspect the main uh, you know the main aspects to be an micc profession uh, luckily because all of us are pharmacy professionals and most of the global companies want hcps so that's where the pharmacy like you know we have you have vast uh, number of people and life sciences backgrounds as well so where we have lot of opportunities and world is looking for micc in india so they want to set up in india because we have n number of uh, hcp professions over here so we have the knowledge of uh, healthcare profession kind of a knowledge and where we can train people then they have knowledge on drugs they have knowledge on pharmacology they have knowledge on toxicology they have knowledge on uh, you know uh, the side effects of the drugs and the indication therapeutics of the drugs so we have vast knowledge the lacking point for micc at current in india is the english 
and uh, language skills so um, if you want to choose macc not only macc any job uh, related to the pv of course uh, currently any job uh, in the world that the language is uh, very much important and the english the the english skill set the the way you talk the way you write uh, it's very much important uh, in this current world i know i know there's a lot of debate it's english is not a knowledge english is not at all a knowledge but english is required um, for uh, presently because whatever we document whatever we do whatever we talk uh, with uh, any other um, region people so this is the language way we need and whatever we document so english is very much important so the uh, along with your whatever the skill sets you have be it therapeutics be it college be it whatever the knowledge you have uh, on the uh, drugs along with that i recommend english um, also to be part of your knowledge so so that's where the micc uh, is one of the profession next come to the icsr like you know vast openings i think everybody knows about the icsr because uh, now uh, the pv the most of the pv reach uh, to the the colleges or the students are is like you know icsr like 90% of the professionals are turning into the part of icsr where uh, they come for a vast number of openings in india uh, it's for the icsr so india is one of the main center for icsr uh, i have already mentioned what what uh, icsr means uh, individual case safety reporting so whatever the reports the icsr have lot of scope um, including literature search literature review all the companies all the companies are you know uh, the regulators have asked all the companies to monitor literatures regularly about the drugs whatever the manufacturing the drug example if paracetamol is been uh, marketed by an x company so they need to monitor the paracetamol like you know the safety so how do they monitor the the paracetamol safety so one thing is from as i said the macc guys uh, will collect the information from the consumers and they will uh, pass it to the icsr team or uh, the relevant teams and the, that's where the databasing of uh, the safety information will be done however there are uh, another uh, type of and uh, monitoring of safety is literature so why i brought this uh, point of literature so uh, mainly the mpharm professionals and uh, phd professionals so i think you you will be you know uh, drafting the literature you will be uh, publishing the literature for um, um, in the good journals where uh, there are the good peer factors because when i'm in masters i even i have uh, published few of uh, my articles so this why i am bringing this point is literature knowledge is also very much important currently like uh, what will be there in the literature what we will write in the literature what will be there in the discussion part what you will mention in the table column what will be there in the result section so that kind of a knowledge is also very much important <laughs> so when we take an interview we will just see uh, how how good the person uh, is with english how good the attitude is how good the the person is uh, with therapeutic knowledge and how good the person is with uh, pharmacology and uh, in his academics along with these all aspects one other thing what we see is the attitude okay so the attitude is very much important uh, for this career because immediately the, there won't be any results uh, when you join into the any any kind of a profession not only pv the attitude is very much required of learning attitude first thing learn you need to learn you need to execute okay the and what kind of an uh, therapeutic knowledge you have gained in your uh, uh, in, in your uh, um, uh, educational profession how do you implement in your pv profession that's very much important because as i said there are a lot of various sources what we get at the icsr icsr is nothing but you will do the databasing of the safety report 
guys i have uh, been interviewed few guys i am because i i'm 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 not a very big professional at pv there are uh, uh, very good uh, in industry there are people with 20 years of experience very good uh, knowledgeable experience guys so in comparative i am still in a learning stage so i will learn daily it's a learning phase so i hope uh, everybody uh, will agree with me so in this profession you need to learn daily about the therapeutics and all and mainly that attitude is very 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 much important and when you come um, um, uh, when you come for an interview what kind of skill set i said the, the best attitude what you have and the uh, therapeutic knowledge and pharmacology and your economics along with that the english skills right so what exactly we do at pv also is required to be known to the people uh, when you come for an um, uh, for uh, an interview or if you want to choose pharmaco vigilance as a profession i can give uh, myself as an example i'm not a very good student at the farm at the level of uh, b farm c uh, i like you know because there is no uh, such uh, like you know interest on this particular on some kind of an uh, profession so uh, after my b farm i just did uh, in a in, in hospital where and been a pharmacist over there that's where i thought the value of the pharmacist i'm a clean i have joined as a clinical pharmacist in that hospital one of the big hospital so people started asking me what are the side effects of these drugs uh that's where i started referring handbooks that's where i had come to know about there's a profession called pharmaco vigilance so what what best i need to do if i choose the pharmaco vigilance as a career so i have done some kind of an uh, some kind of an homework which is the best college uh, to where i get the exposure so i have done my own uh, homework and i have chosen the best thing so that's where my attitude has been changed so what is the right thing to do so i have been chosen the right college okay it's see any college is uh, right uh, college i will not tell this college but yeah there will be some kind of an uh, boosting from the professors and uh, not some kind there's lot of impact will be there by the professors i completely agree that's what it happened in my career so lot of uh, impact with your professors how they talk how they teach how they talk tell about the profession is uh so uh, i know that that's also one of the important aspects but at the same time that interest also should be there uh, in the student so you need to know what is happening in the pv current pv what are the guidelines have been followed so there are gvp modules uh, and there are ich uh, guidelines c2b guidelines uh, so those are the things where you need to concentrate along with your the so, you know academic skill sets i think as of now i'm clear so these are the main aspects what we look into the um, uh, pv professionals what we want uh, currently from the eng guys and the next thing uh, what i want to focus is pharmaco vigilance is not a software okay so recently uh, in a lot of my interviews or a lot of my interaction with the eng people of uh, pharmacy professions what i heard from people what i heard from the very good resources like means very good people of uh, academics and they their academics are 85 percentage 90 percentage in their academics and we, when i ask about uh, what do you why do you choose pharmaco vigilance as a profession they say it's a five day working it's like a software job um you will give laptops will be working in the laptops and all no please don't come in this kind of an uh, mindset i i have very good respect on software people i do i don't deny they are the one who uh, is leading the uh, like you know the world but we have our own uniqueness pharmaco vigilance we deal with our drug safety patient safety you need to understand the the patient safety like uh, If we are the one like you know if uh, if the drug is very much important like how medical professional is important how doctors are important same way pharmacy people or uh, who are related to the pharmacy the, who are related to the drug beat the life cycle chemistry guys they're equally important so please give some 
professional respect of uh, the pv don't come like you know this is a software job uh, what we do this is not a software job you deal with um, safety reports you you deal with uh, you know the databases what have been developed by farmco sorry um, uh, what have been developed by softwares but you don't do any software kind of a job you deal with the safety reports you will get various kind of a safety reports you will get from consumer like you know you will get 100 pages of safety reports like literature example you will have a article of 100 pages of uh, literature article where you need to look into what is your drug why the drug has been taken what are his uh, conditions what are his current condition what are his con meds like you know what are the other drugs has been given whether uh, so what kind of an indication that drug is being given so these are the skill sets what we look into for a pv uh, farm go vision profession so please concentrate on these things don't think it's a software kind of a profession and you need to before coming into the uh, like you know before choosing into the pv as a career you need to know the basics of the pv like when it's uh, called as a susas when it is called as an sce uh, serious adverse events what is the basic difference between the adverse events and the adverse drug reactions these are the common things i know like, like all uh, like um, pharmaceuticals or uh, qa qc there are a lot of other branches where they will not know in detail of uh, of uh, these kind of things but there are a lot of channels in uh, like way if you google uh, these are the basic things what you get what is the midra uh, what is what 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 do you mean by midra and also these are the basic knowledge what we look into whether you guys have so i just want you people to be in a right attitude learn things come like you know come prepared and uh, uh, again i want to reiterate one thing like education like you know your marks are very much important at the same time your attitude is more important than your marks and the right skill sets like i said therapeutic knowledge is very much important again i am reiterating pharmacology is very much important and the like you know uh, even if you have the knowledge of clinical pharmacy uh, it's also very much important as we also deal with the drug interactions and all so So, clinical pharmacy also like you know it will show what are the interventions you have like overdose off label use in clinical pharmacy if uh, if you are farm d professionals or pharmacy practice professionals or uh, i think even in the pharmacology you will have uh, this subject where these all deals with so these are the as uh, these are the things what you need to what you need to focus in okay so uh, i see sr like you know because i i have till now i have focused on whatever the uh, educational background you should have or uh, whatever the aspects you need to you need to concentrate on now i am just going to brief you what is an icsr what exactly we do as i said uh, there are various kind of sources what we get to be you know, where we need to document those things safety reporting we call it as so we will get lot of various report as i said from mscc we will get spontaneous reports and from clinical trials we get um, clinical uh, trial reports like uh, we call it as a say susas and all and also from literature monitoring as well uh, we'll get a lot of safety report way we will document it what what exactly we do in this icsr so guys we do like labeling assessment you know whether the drug and the event is related or not that's what it is causal uh, called as causal relationship okay whether it is related or not whether this event is already listed whether this uh, the studies have because as uh, rajesh had mentioned clinical trials will happen like where the investigator will give the data to the pv professions and the pv profession and further evaluate and we will submit it to the regulatory authorities that's where we will tell these these are the events are already there like you know but risks are this much and the benefits are this much what are the risk we will tell the and that's where the contraindications will come into the place where the drugs should not be used for these kind of a patients and for these indications that's what there is lot of vast study done in this pv okay and the, this is the brief about the icsr so the career if you want to build the career because lot of opportunities currently what we look what we see in um, uh, currently in india or in pv profession is icsr there is a lot of vast 
um, ex vast openings. Um, every year you will get a um, lot of uh, like you know openings for this kind of a job ICSR uh, roles. And in these ICSR roles, once you've been trained and once you have been well versed, you will have very good future. Like first you will start with uh, like you know assessing all this uh, data and uh, give, like you know you will be entering this data in the right format like um, uh, in the professional format and then there is another uh, thing like you know you will get promoted to be a quality reviewer whether whatever is the initially it is done with that will go to the next level where the quality reviewer will look into this and then the medical reviewer comes part and then these cases will be reported uh, to regulator in the various channel either um, uh, depending upon the report reporting criteria and um, i know like you know whomever are focusing on the pharmaco business career you you might have been um, done some homework about the reporting criteria what are the various reporting criteria how the reporting will be done to the regulatory authorities so this is one of the profession in uh, pv like i said micc and icsr next come to the signal detection so the, i'll just uh, mix up with signal detection and aggregate reporting so uh, most of the signal detection uh, before signal detection professions used to be taken from the ICSR because signal detection team should also know the knowledge of ICSR. But currently, because uh, the people are uh, like you know very well educated, they know what is therapeutics, they know what are the ecology, what are the what are the drugs and how the drugs are and how do they act and the trend. They know about the labeling or listedness. So the signal, the signal guys now nowadays uh, companies are even recruiting directly for signal from um, signals and aggregate report from directly from the colleges uh, who are um, especially from the farm D professions uh, sorry farm D and uh, PhD professions and M firms where they have very good exposures in writing skill sets you should have very good knowledge in the writing skill sets like you need to publish few literature articles where you know you need to uh, um, like you know which has good peer factors and all so that kind of an uh, skill set if you have so these professions because a lot of writing is involved and even in icsr there's a writing involved like narrative writing you need to write but if it comes to the signal detection or um, aggregate writing where you will assess the drug safety and the benefit and the benefit risk evaluations there's a lot of data you need to incorporate and the writing skill set used to be very good so this is along Along with your therapeutic or pharmacy knowledge, you should also have the writing skill set. So please focus on your writing skill sets and the literature skills, like what you write in the literature. So if you if your CV has this kind of a literature, ex, literatures like your publications, like these many literatures, with whatever the the peer factor you have, and um, these many publications you have. So that 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 will help for your um, uh, career in your aggregate and signal detection and the growth across across the PV is immense. Like if you see in an ICSR, there's a because nowadays the if currently I can give an example of uh, COVID situation because once there's a COVID situation now there are a lot of new drugs are coming in a lot of clinical trials is happening across all the MAHs they started working on COVID so that's where the clinical trial like you no know, all the authorities are giving approval for clinical trials so once you start once you start giving in med medicine product to any any of the individual that's where the safety starts so we need to monitor the safety so the safety profession will have very good future okay very good future but the only thing you should come with the right uh, mindset as as here in the pv professions especially in the pv professions we have a lot of uh, timelines regulatory timelines regulatory will not uh, wait for um, you know whenever we report they, they have their own timeline so so it it has some kind of a pressure this job because there's a lot of learning there there's a lot of your uh, skill set where you need to use in the reports the quality like about your drug about your about why he took the drug the indications you need you need to differentiate between the historical conditions and the current conditions and the indication and the current conditions and the event what happened the side effects and the current conditions the difference between i know the relationship between your drug or not so this will come with your uh, 
good therapeutical knowledge or pharmacology knowledge or whatever uh, you know uh, your uh, pharmacy knowledge whatever we train to you as well as you should have the basic pharmacology uh, knowledge and therapeutical knowledge so if you see the career uh, if you uh, if you want to grow in this career yes if you have a right attitude you have very good career opportunities you will go into the line management uh, in the sense where you will be managing some team kind of a things from there you will be managing projects like project management from there you will multiple project management then there you will deal with um, you know author like if you go into the um, like directly into mh companies directly i can give an example x company where they has the manufacturing so you deal directly with the authorities you talk directly with the authorities of your safety so there's lot of scope in this safety like uh, drug safety and um, it's also there is a scope of pharmaco vigilance officers like um, in the other countries and in india it's pharmaco vigilance officers where the authorities will uh, hire you and for the other countries as well from uh, in the europe in the europe countries and uh, other uh, western countries they need to have uh, for uh, all the drug safety purposes they 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 should be one uh, qualified person it's called as qppv every country now nowadays they are getting this kind of an uh, role like where they will directly connect this qppv they will not directly ask the owners or um, the mhs who marketing authorization holders they will ask this particular person and he should be well versed with the pharmaco vigilance uh, all the guidelines as and all so there is very good scope in this aspects where i can see a lot of indian professionals are being hired as a qpp like you know qualified persons even in the other countries so there is a very good scope guys where where mhs will depend on you so if you have a right attitude they will depend on you and if every time you need to learn what all new modules what are the new guidelines as are coming in in the aspects of the pharmaco vigilance and nowadays the vigilance is not only limited to the medicines okay nowadays the vigilance is also expanded to devices it's also as expanded to cosmetics no cosmeto vigilance devices now there is something called as evaluation reports clinical evaluation reports where if you want to register devices the the the, the regulators are asking the like you know to give evaluation reports where you will monitor like you know like how we do aggregate reporting in a pv so even devices needs to have uh, reporting so the writing skill sets are very much important as i said and uh, the, the, the knowledge of the therapy text is very much important and the pharmacology is very much important guys so that's all uh, from my side uh, about the career aspects what you need to focus and uh, just a brief on um, like you know what is the pv what are the different kinds of uh, scope in a pv but again guys one more thing like micc as i said right now there is a boom uh, what i can see every company wants an micc center in india that's what i off late i'm just seeing might be the profish micc cosmeto vigilance and even for uh, device uh, vigilance as well like it's also a pharmaco vigilance part of a pharmaco vigilance for devices so there is a scope in these aspects so micc is uh, also a good profession to choose so uh, don't because, because they are also hiring only hcps so uh, and once because it's in a initial stages in india once if you have a very good growth you you are the people who will have the scope in it and who will be developing like mscc centers in the small scale of um, industries like example like recently if uh, some some uh, companies want to launch their uh, products in us or europe from india so they 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 might be having a 6 to 7 or 10 products so they they can't go for um, some service providers uh, they will try to build in house so that's where the macc skill sets will will helpful like you know you you will have some kind of a demand over there so that's also when one of the good um, career opportunities what i see currently but i'm uh, um, uh, how you give importance for icsr aggregate signal so you can also think about the micc but all like you know we have these are the different aspects that's what i just want to you know communicate so that's all from my end uh, if any questions uh, 
I am ready to take it up. Hello, am I audible to all? Yeah, Rajesh, I can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, there are a few questions which came from the audience uh, from okay. listeners. Uh, before going on that, I just uh, need to know first of all that what is a uh, post uh, COVID ca career in pharmacovigilance? How yeah. you are seeing that? Yeah, good, good point, Rajesh. I uh, forgot to tell you. Like um, as I have already mentioned, because of this COVID, um, uh, there are a lot of new drugs are getting launched and uh, new products are being in the clinical trial. So there are very good. This is a good opportunity for uh, PV professionals as we get a lot of uh, reports and uh, the safety reports uh, uh, across. So there's a very good scope. And as well as now the trends, because um, currently, uh, you know, the situations, we cannot go to the offices and all. So PV uh, for Pamco Vigilance is the profession where uh, we can work off of office like yes there are there are um, a few challenges where we need to um, have interactions and all with um, like the lot of interactions with the other department uh, with other departments as well it's uh, but however there are now those links the, those dots are getting filled so uh, the career they, there is no much impact because of this uh, covid uh, situations and because of, I can tell, because of this COVID situation, uh, the good thing happened for PV profession because there's a lot of uh, drugs are coming in and even the work can be done uh, uh, from home. Once you have been trained, uh, once the uh, data safe, like, you know, that data privacy is very much important. So uh, once we take all these measures about the data privacy, so it's, uh, it's not a um, tough task to to work uh, from home but at the same time uh, this we'll come out of this situation and uh, you know uh, we'll be working back from the offices as well so uh, there is no much impact but as if you see the career or the opportunity wises because of this covid i can tell the opportunities are going to increase i can just give you an example over here if the clinical trials or new drugs coming in obviously the safety things will come up right so the the reporting will go up like once it's in the clinical trial uh, once um, the individuals or the patients are being uh, given with uh, drugs obviously there will be some kind of a reactions where we need to monitor so that's where the healthcare profession our safety profession preview professions are very much required so there is very good scope uh, post covid as well as there are a lot of uh, lot of studies are going on and um, because i i didn't see like you know much much uh, you know um, phase 3 phase 2 studies so once this uh, this uh, drugs or vaccines come into um, you know the market like you know post marketing thing uh, phase 4 so there will be a lot of uh, safety information so very good scope so pv will be in booming after this right okay okay the next question is from julkar khilji and that is about is clinical courses or pg diploma are mandatory yeah. for pharmacovigilance not actually because um, the i don't know if even the pg guys are there like you know but like uh, the the pg who are conducting the pg diploma i don't want to disappoint them but see that skill sets are very much important uh, whether they they go and they they read they, they go and they get the knowledge at pg diploma or they 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 themselves learn that the homework what they do individually it's up to them but they need to know the basic knowledge of pharmacovigilance what is pharmacovigilance what we does what is the seriousness criteria when we will consider cases serious non serious the basic difference between adverse drug reactions ae what is medra medra terminologies and uh, what current versions what is the importance of medra these and all i know because in academics these all are not covered so in pg diploma they will be covering these things and uh, and also the database because yes uh, in uh, in uh, one of the aspects why 
PG courses are important is the database skills at what they give. Anyways, the training will be done at our side as well. We will be also giving them the training, but we will see the the whether they know basics or not, whether they have any kind of a database experience, whether they are being trained in this PG diplomas. But of late, what I have observed in the PG diplomas, not all, not all. I just don't want to blame or uh, tell on all, but the ninety percentage uh, of uh, the the PG diplomas. I don't know how much they do they charge, but um, they are not giving the complete information of uh, databases. At least show them the database. If if they if uh, guys, I think this is for you. Like you know, if you are paying, ask them to show the database. Show them what all is there in the database. What all fields are there in database, so that you will know what all, like reporter. What is the importance of reporter? You will understand what what details to be entered of uh, you know no, the in events. Simple term, in simple terms, we can say that B farm or M farm in pharmacology or pharmacy practice or PharmD can directly also apply in for. Team. Yeah, correct. Right? Okay. Yeah, correct. Great. They can directly Great. apply. They can. I am not like I am not focusing currently for these people, uh, Rajesh. I am focusing for the other people, especially for the B farm guys and all. So, where if because they they will have interest on learning about the farm business. That's where they'll go into the PG profession of uh, farm business. That's true. So, they will get knowledge. They will get knowledge yeah. if they are yes. going for PG diplomas and all. Right. Yeah, right. And my my only my only uh, my only point over here is they need to ask that you know that uh, trainer to show the database, or okay. because what is the importance of the database? Why I'm focusing on database? So if they see the fields, like you know the, the in the database we will enter a lot of uh, data which is related to the safety. Example, I can give you conditions, current conditions, history, what drug. What, what what drug? What suspect drug? What con conmed drug? What is the indication? What is the dose? Because every every field has its own importance. That is where the because all are healthcare professions. If college people or uh, pra practice people or uh, pharma people, be it um, PhD guys who have done with these aspects in their like you know in their uh, PhD um, uh, topics, so they will be knowing. They will they will catch immediately. They will catch in our trainings within ten fifteen days, but for the oh. other guys, they will take some kind of a time because we will do evaluation. It's not like immediately. See, once they get the job, it's not done. Okay, it's not done because they they will be in a lot of confusion. What is this and all? So if they know the importance of these things before they come, it's well and good. But uh, off late, what I am seeing, like you know, they these. Guys, just my hearting, or uh, I don't know whether the PG professionals, like you know, the PG tutorials uh, are teaching these only definitions and they're sending. Uh, but that's where, like you know, if they qualified for the interview, but they're struggling, off late they're struggling. So, just I don't want um, you know them to deep dive into the databases and show, but at least show them and uh, teach them the importance of the database that's where the interest will come in uh, into them and that's where uh, they will know what is pv professional and they will not tell it's a software kind of a job and um, few of the pg tra pg training programs tu tutors have told like you know the trainers have told it seems this is a farm pharmaco vigilance is like a software kind of a job i am i am sorry to say this but Yes, software is a very good profession, but we deal with patient safety. We should be proud of that. Right. Yes. Okay. Another question is there from Sivangi Ben Misri. Uh, yes. That uh, uh, is, PV opportunities are there in small cities, or only it is there in metro cities? <laughs> nice question. <laughs> because lot of people, see, most of people are also staying, and they have preference that they want a job in their own areas. So I this is uh, including me, including the audience. Yeah. yeah, yeah, including me. Yeah, currently because see, farm co vigilance is the um, mostly it will be done. The work will be done, uh, you know, um, uh, in the corporate offices because we get all the documents ready made from the regulatories. Or uh, because nowadays it's all um, you know corporate. Like you will get all the documents online, so that's where um, we 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 use the software. So the most of the jobs currently 
yeah in the big cities metros but yeah what i can what i'm seeing the trend like you know second tier um, means two tier cities example i can give nagpur nagpur i cannot tell it's a second tier might be it's in a metro but coimbatore nagpur and all the pv is getting uh, expanded uh, even to those kind of facilities but the major opportunities are at metro i think um, if you see um, maharashtra in the sense like mumbai gujarat uh, um, maybe telangana be it uh, karnataka tamil nadu means the metros of these cities have very good opportunities yeah but that's how it was the in gujarat also uh, cities like ahmedabad baroda they have, yeah, they have very good opportunities yes they have right they have very so, good opportunities because the corporate offices are there like you know the the example like um, i can give few examples like uh, i can take um, like all of you know there are companies like uh, i don't know whether i can take the names but uh, you all know like sipla rambaxi jnj and all they they have their own headquarters offices and all so that's where uh, they deal the pv activities as well and um, the small cities uh, actually have uh, bulk truck uh, manufacturings or um, uh, what you call it as uh, yeah mainly uh, bulk truck uh, manufacturings where this doesn't directly deal with um, safety right so we should have the marketing authorization holder so bulk truck companies uh they will not have uh, this kind of an activity but they should have marketing authorization holder in that particular country or in india if they need to directly sell the product so that's where they will deal the uh, safety patient safety okay. that's uh, as per regulatory so okay. that's why non metro cities as of no no but hopefully if the companies are expanding to non metro cities we will also get the opportunities okay uh next question is from uh, devi the question is yeah. that that medical transcription and pv are same or the uh, medical no. transcription is part of it no it's uh, different medical transcription is uh, completely different uh, but they also require medical transcription also require the knowledge of medical terminologies but it is different right because the medical transcription is a direct a profession which require uh, dictation whichever doctor so our nurses are speaking uh, the clips are coming and you have to uh, dictate those things right. as a document right, right. yeah a uh, next question is from uh, subhi gupta uh, is pv pharmacovigilance is about a new drug or also it work on existing drugs yeah very nice question uh, uh, who is that uh, subhi gupta hi subhi gupta very nice question i have missed this point yeah it's any any new drug any drug once it has like you know once they apply you know new drug application it's called as new drug application from there the pv activity starts like you know once if you if you want to trial it in the um, in a patients like you know the safety Uh, even in the pre pre clinicals as well the safety uh, is very much important that's where you will drive some information uh, in uh, pre clinical studies as well in the animal studies as well that's where the data will come this this system is affected on this like you know uh, cns or this system that that data like you know small data will get it from uh, pre clinical so in pre clinicals as well the safety data is important and once the new drug is been given in the clinical trial so that that the ct pv will be done where we will be giving the information to the regulatory bodies and once the the product is in the market so that that time the regulatory will monitor the, this uh, post marketing drug we call it as once it's in market once it's in the uh, phase 4 or in the market because i will give you like for trial 1 20 healthy patients and trial uh, 2 200 to like you know 200 uh, people and then trial 3 depending on the depending on the pharmacological action and uh, it's it has some kind of if it's an oncology the 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 size will be different and it depends on the therapy particular area so the reach maximum it will be there for 20000 people but the regulatory don't know the reach on the millions of the people so the interest will be there even on existing drugs so example like paracetamol i can tell you the paracetamol drug is there from 
long time and there are a lot of uh, marketing um, authorities are um, you know are marketing the drug so every parasit whoever has the parasit mal drug even till they do the uh, drug uh, safety pv activities for that and they need to submit to regulators whatever the reports they get so that's the importance of the pv that's the importance of the medicines that's the importance like i don't want to i don't want to tell the other like you know um, only about the allopathy whatever the medicines of our, our, our as is a pharmacy deal with i i have immense respect because we do safety monitoring for all the drugs be it new be it before coming into the you know uh, clinical study so everywhere we give the importance of the safety that is why we didn't got any drug of the covid like you know immediately they can tell right because why it is taking lot of time why clinical trials is important even though after coming out that is the importance of the safety so thanks for bringing this um, question so even after in the market this drugs will be monitored and the people the as i told you in every drug you know uh, the manufacturing drug they will have some kind of an uh, detail so where you can um, file in your complaint this side effect or adverse effect you got and we also monitor uh, literature reports because literature reports also like you know all med- med- medicinal uh, med- medicine professionals will report the adverse uh, reaction so every literature will be monitored and it will be reported to the regulatory so the safety is for any time like you know new drug or existing drug uh, pre clinicals everywhere safety is there that's where our profession is the pv profession like you know we can tell you ourselves where we look into safety safety is very much important okay uh, next question is uh, came from uh... Uh, one person that is market capitalization in pv since last 3 years i am not very much sure <laughs> i need to look into it and i need to do i'll get back no. on this question for sure uh, next question is by from thirisa that what kind of databases are used in pv yeah vastly argus and arisg and uh, there are small kind of a database but yeah vastly 90% of the companies Mm, Argus and uh, Aris. Okay, okay. Uh, that was a really nice discussion, and we are con- concluding this session with that. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Raju, for giving such a uh, very important and very, you know, very important uh, information for the students that uh, they can get uh, very much insight of pharmacovigilance from here. and i am very sure that they will this information will definitely helpful for them that for uh, making their career in pharmacovigilance thank you very much thank you very thank much thank you thank you guys thanks for your time thank you thanks rajesh for giving me this opportunity yeah thank you friends if you have still have any queries still you have any questions you can write in comment box uh, we will be there for you or also you can write us a mail on our mail id okay we will be always there and we are working for you people and we will meet you up uh, in the next uh, next session which is uh, in the evening time that is for the production department that how and what production department is doing and what will be the career in that we will uh, meet up soon okay thank you very much thank you